Hey guys, welcome to the next tutorial of ethical hacking and penetration testing via Kali Linux. So, in the previous tutorial, I taught you exactly how SQL injection works. So, before I proceed, I'll start with a bit of how what are things are included in that, and then I will show you exactly how you can go ahead and penetrate into some or the other uh, website. And as of now, I don't have the website with me, uh, or and I, since I cannot go ahead and actually. Uh, inject someone else's website but I'll, uh, I won't be able to go ahead and show you that practically but I will be showing you what are the things that we need and how it exactly works so that you have an in-depth knowledge as to uh, when you want to inject someone else with this SQL query you'll know exactly what to do. So to start with SQL injection is just a code injection technique and it is used to attack data driven application in which malicious SQL statements are inserted into an entry field for execution. That is example, let's say, to dump the database contents to the attacker. SQL injection must exploit a security vulnerability in the application software. So, for example, when user input is either uh, incorrectly filled, uh, filtered or for string literal escape characters embedded in SQL statements or user input is not strongly typed and unexpectedly executed, SQL injection is most commonly known as an attack vector for websites but it can be used to attack any type of SQL databases. In uh, this tutorial, I'll show you how to use the SQL map, SQL injection on Kali Linux to hack into a website, more specifically a database, and extract the usernames and passwords on Kali Linux. So to start with, what is SQL map? SQL map is an open source feature um, or you can say as open source penetration testing tool that automates the process of detecting and exploiting SQL injection flaws and taking over of database servers. So it's it can be like for example if you are browsing something then you can just go ahead and write some query in the URL of a particular website and it will take you that to, to that. Let's for example in my company uh, I had a intranet and I was an IT person over there so what exactly happened uh, was that every person has their own uh, account and they could see uh, their own you can say as let's say for example they could see that only their uh, own leaves and all those stuff how much uh, how many times they were late and how many times they have taken leaves whether they were present or not and everything so each person had their own account and only they can see it was made in that way but there were some people around who started knowing about everyone else and started complaining to other people's bosses stating that they have taken leaves whereas these people were not allowed and all this stuff. So when I went ahead and checked into that specific application how they were doing and they were not even actually any IT people who were actually doing this. They were just simple 23, 24 year people who had just gotten into the organization with no idea they were actually what they were actually doing was SQL injection. Uh, so the simplest thing what they did was that my company's URL was like uh, it was an internet and when you go ahead and log into internet it will go ahead and show your specific ID on the URL. So what people used to do people used to go ahead and change only the uh, employee ID code. My, uh, let's say for example uh, my dummy ID code would be 15093. So the um, if uh, I wanted to check someone else's uh, so I could just go ahead and check his ID card let's say for example it's one if uh, the other person's ID code is 5095 I would straight away go ahead and insert uh, only replace that specific ID number with 15095 and it will give me all his details even if I have not logged in into that account and that was a bug and that is what actual SQL injection is the people over there did not actually even know what they were doing but still it was SQL injection so that's how it looks like. So SQL injection, uh, SQL map in uh, Cal Linux, it comes with a powerful detection engine. Many features for the ultimate penetration tester and a broad range of switches lasting from let's say data fingerprinting or over data fetching from database to accessing the underlying file system and executing commands on the operating system via out of band connections. It can do that, yes. So these are some of the uh, important features of SQL map. I have not written every one of them. But I will be telling you each and every one of them. So it has full support for MySQL, Oracle, PostgreSQL, and uh, Microsoft SQL Server, Microsoft Access, IBM DB2, that's Database 2, SQLite, Firebird, CBase, SAP, Max Database Management Systems, as you can see over here. And SQL support, uh, it provides full support for six SQL injection techniques. That's Boolean-based blind, 
time based blind error based blind uh, so not error based blind it's just error based union query start queries and out of band after that it's also supports to directly connect to the database without passing via an sql injection by providing database management management system credentials ip addresses ports and even a database name it also supports to enumerate users password hashes privileges roles databases tables and column it can also go and automatically recognize a password hash format and it will also provide support if not only hacking it will also provide support for cracking them using dictionary based attack it also has support to dump database tables entirely or a range of entries or specific columns as per user's choice it's quite user friendly and the user can also go and choose to dump only uh, let's say a range of characters from the each columns entry uh, we can say a support to it also has support to search for specific database names specific tables uh, all across the database or specific columns across all database tables this is useful for let's say uh, for instance when you want to identify tables containing custom application credentials where relevant column names contain a string like name and pass so it also supports to download and upload any file from the database server underlying file system when the database software is mysql postgresql or microsoft sql server it has support to execute arbitrary commands to retrieve all of these things and uh, their standard output on the database server underlying operating system when database uh, software is mysql postgresql or microsoft sql server it also has support to for database processes using user privilege escalation via metasploits meterpeter get system command it can support to establish an out of band stateful tcp connection between the attacker machine and the database server underlying the operating system so this channel can be an interactive command prompt such as a meterpeter session or a graphical user interface such as vnc session as per the user's choice so uh, yeah that's that's it for that uh, i cannot i don't think i can make it much more clearer than it is already because this is the simplest thing that i can tell you so let's start with actually going ahead and uh, gaining some access to some computers or to some databases through mysql queries so the first thing that you would have to do is to go ahead and find a vulnerable website so this is usually the toughest bit and takes longer than any steps those who know how to use google docs uh, know this already but in case you don't know just anything you can just go and search in google just copy paste any of the lines uh, in google and google will show you a number of results uh, so i'll just go and show you a few examples as to uh, how google works let me just show you if you think that google is just used for going ahead from one website to another then you're wrong i'll just show you one simple example and just type let's say for example if I'll, I'll just give a few examples such as if i wanted to search let's say uh, any specific person on facebook so uh, this is just an example as to how we can go and use google docs so instead of me going ahead and searching i can just uh, let's say for example the person's name is sandy and the last name would be let's say for example smith sandy smith so or adam smith uh, just to be more precise i just go ahead and select let's say um in text uh, i'll just go ahead and select adam and i'll just go ahead and type let's say um in text and i'll go ahead and use it as let's say or i'll just use insight facebook.com let me see if this works site rather than insight okay my chrome is stuck i'll just go to modify it a bit so what i should get over here is that everything related to uh, the name adam on the site facebook.com i should not get any uh, even a single search more than that perfect so as you can see uh, i have over here adam page from facebook.com and i think these are the only few people from facebook.com if i had something else then i could also go ahead and select that or i could just type let's say you can just type adam inside facebook.com 
it will give me or uh, everything related to Adam uh, from let's say name or last name or anything uh, from facebook.com so only if this works let me check that seems to be extremely so okay let's see perfect as you can see I have Adam page over here everything related to facebook.com so this is so uh, what I'm trying to explain over here is that Google Docs can help you search all the vulnerable websites. So you don't need to go ahead and uh, actually go ahead and check from website to website as to how you can go ahead and gather any or uh, every other uh, Google information. So that there are a really long list. So uh, I only showed you in text and uh, in site or just site. There are in URL and uh, cache memory files. So uh, the list is quite long and if I go ahead and write that down, it will take me a long time to go ahead and collect them. So if you know SQL, then you can still go ahead and add more and uh, Google is very vulnerable to SQL so you can easily go ahead and search a lot of things only from SQL. So that would be our step one and uh, the second thing would be we need to go ahead and do an initial check. So initial check would be to confirm if the website is vulnerable to SQL map injection. So, but that would be it for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, I'll be continuing with the initial check part.